You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. Yeah, let's get your whiskey over here, T. Oh, Come yeah. cheers with us, dude. Right. Come cheers. Are you? Are we going? Yeah, we're going. Hell yeah. Cool. What's up, Anthony? How's it going? Good. Good to see you, brother. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for coming by the stew. T, cheers, cheers boys. Guys. Cheers. It wouldn't be right to uh, have a ATX drinker on the pod without a little whiskey. That's yeah. how I feel. Am I supposed to do that? All right, get out of here. All right, bye. Um, am I supposed to do that? Like, honestly, come most on, people don't do that. But. Really? <laughs> but I'm such a like layman when it comes to whiskey, dude. Like, I don't know anything about it. You're gonna have to teach me. Like, what do I even look for? Like, when I'm sipping on a whiskey. Well, I will say, step one is to just take little sips because that's take the biggest sips. thing. Is like, I'm everybody a, takes it like shots. Dude, yeah, I'm a beverage chugger. Yeah, like I will punish beverages. I'm the <laughs> kind of guy that has like a water, coffee, an energy drink. A liquid IV, yeah. and I'm just like I'm the same way. Yeah. That's why, like, I'll go out, I'll have a couple of regular drinks, and then I'll order a whiskey. And yeah, then I just down it because I'm sipping it like I sip all other drinks. Right. You know. Yeah. It's um, kind of a night capper. Here, tip yeah. this microphone up just a little bit more, just so it's right. In. There you go. Cool. Yeah. So, um, so you're from Jersey? Yeah, Jersey originally. originally right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought I remembered that. Right. Yeah, I've been here for about four years now. Yeah. You I came it? here when I was like 31. Okay. I think, 30. Nice. And. Uh, it was just boring. I mean, I was in the suburbs, so New York City was like an hour away. Uh -huh. Philadelphia was an hour away. The Jersey Shore was an hour away. So there was things that were out there, and it was fun. Great food. But I was going to ask how, like, the nightlife was different compared it, to, to here. It's like when you hear those stories in movies where people, like, go back on Thanksgiving and they go to the local bar. Okay. It was kind of like that. Like, yeah. there was just the typical neighborhood bars that everybody went to, and you saw high school friends there right. that you didn't want to see. Um, so we got tired of, you know, planning every like two to three months, uh, getting an Airbnb in like New York so we could take a trip there. Right. And we said there's not somewhere. a bunch of cool shit right around where you were at, mm -hmm. right? Where in Jersey were you? I was I'm not near... super familiar with it, but I've been to like two places. I've been to Hoboken and Clifton. Yeah, a lot of people say like Hoboken because it's like right outside of New York City. Uh -huh. You could almost just like take one of the trains in. Yeah. And um, I was near like Princeton Trenton, which is the capital. That's exactly like in the middle of New Jersey. Okay. And from there you could take the train for, I think it's like 50 minutes and you're in New York City. Okay. That's not so bad. you could do day trips. Right. But you know, but you'd have to come them. back drunk as fuck at night uh, yeah, and you're on a like, train. Oh, I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so I, you I, like it better here. It's yeah. Nice. Best decision I've ever made in my life. Really? Yeah. And I always tell people this cause I know, you know how some people act they're like, you know, all these people are moving to Austin, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Some people don't care. Some people hate it. But I moved here because I fit here better. I didn't come here because yeah. I thought the city was cool. Yeah. My, like, open personality that likes the nightlife, that is friendly with everybody I meet. And make friends, like, uh, at the bar or whatever. Mm -hmm. You you know, you could you could make a friend for life at the bar out here. Because people are so damn cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? And authentic, too. Like, they're not – there's not as many people, I feel like, putting on, like, a, a – like a mask when they go out and then like once you get to know them you're like oh maybe we don't get along you kind of like meet somebody you're kind of meeting like the real version of them 100 percent. a lot of the time i mean i'm sure you're gonna have oh, your yeah. bad eggs around you know what i mean yeah but, if you get somebody that's like yeah i'm only working here for six months because my job brought me here right that's usually the only bad time we don't trust you yeah it's get like something like city. that no. where they're just like you know not here for the culture they're just here for a job but yeah. when people moved here because they said they did research and they found that you know there's a great music scene or there's a lot of great bars they can go to all the people i met through yeah. that have been amazing yeah um so when did you so let's tell me tell me about this whiskey what are we drinking here so is this, this is uh nelson briar nelson greenbrier nelson greenbrier nelson. shout out nelson greenbrier this is good i and I, I say that like i know anything about it but it's just <laughs> it's like it's kind of smooth i don't know let's try again i didn't do the thing and that I, time I do, I do this a lot if you don't mind i do it i pull up the notes okay that you're tasting because it helps me search for them sometimes sometimes i can figure it out on my own but mm -hmm. never exact to a t but this one is saying Nutmeg, shortbread, and honey. And I can see there's a breadiness to it. Yeah. See, I always thought those were funny. Like, like I first started seeing that, I feel like, when I was young and I was going to the mall and I was going to, like, Starbucks. <laughs> and they'd be like, taste of blueberry, marshmallow, bubblegum. And I'm like, yeah. what? This tastes like shit. Like, this just tastes like burnt 
Starbucks coffee. Like, what, how does this supposed to taste any different? Yep. And when we started the whiskey, which I originally had a whiskey page for those that don't know, and then I became the ATX drinker. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just me and my buddy tasting whiskeys, and we said the exact same thing. We were okay. like, oh, wow, it doesn't burn, or this one is like, right. would be better with some water. And then we slowly evolved into understanding okay. it a little bit better. Yeah, because somebody explained it to me, and I don't know if this is correct or not, but Someone explained it to me like it's actually more about the mouth feel when they describe those things and like mm. the acidity levels. Interesting. I like see with that. coffee. That you know what I mean? Like when they say pink lemonade, mm -hmm. that's the they're referring to the acidity level. The acidity of it, I guess. I don't know. I think there's actual flavors in whiskey specifically, but I yeah. could see other things being I just more remember like that. when we were uh like we were we'd be at the still Austin things where kind of how we met. Yep. And uh and I was just like there ta talking about them and tasting them. I'm just like, dude, these taste all the same to me. And I'm getting <laughs> drunk right now. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm getting less and less capable of like dif like depicting the different flavors in this thing. Yep. I still feel like I'm only 60% of the way there. Yeah. Like if 100% is me knowing exactly what I'm tasting every time I taste it, yeah. I still have a way to go. Yeah. Um, but to see the difference between when I started to now, it's been pretty phenomenal. So do you think we'll taste the, do you think I'll be able to taste the difference between this one and the other one when we switch over? We'll have to, we'll have to. Uh... That, I mean, I wish I, I knew this conversation in advance just because actually, you know, if I brought specific bottles, I couldn't. Do that you could you. help me yeah. out with that. It's yeah. all right. I don't. I don't care. But I think these two might actually be kind of. We're just similar. here to drink whiskey and chill out, dude. Oh, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But no, um, I, I I say that because I get so excited about this stuff. So yeah. when I know somebody's a beginner mm -hmm. drinking whiskey, that's what I like to do. I'll bring them like a really shitty whiskey, and when they say, "Oh, I can't tell the difference," mm -hmm. okay, great. Here's a right. Jim Beam. Yeah. And oh then, yeah. Now let me get you like a Michter's. See, I feel like I even with my with my lack of knowledge about it, I even know enough that this taste this is easier to drink. Mm. Like that's kind of my barometer is like how easy is it for me to yeah. drink? Yeah, that's you know the what I mean. Like, for most people, yeah. Like it, this doesn't burn my throat when mm -hmm. I drink it, like Jim Beam does, or whatever. Yeah, and it just tastes. Just, uh, and then probably the next morning, how it makes me feel the next morning is probably the other thing. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, I that's be able a, to actually. Understand. That's funny. That's a go-to for a lot of people when it comes to hangovers, right? They're like, "How was the quality of the liquor?" Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Here, this let one, me. I'm gonna put this up a little higher so you can. Yeah. This is, I want to make sure we get you. Should I stay closer to it, or is that? Yeah, yeah. Stay a little closer to it. It's like I, I think the. The, the the rule that you always hear is like a bait, like a fist away from your mouth or okay. something. And if you need to like pull it up or scoot in or lower your chair, you can do that. Cool. You're fine though. But yeah, um, so for people that don't know who you are, you're the ATX drinker. You're kind of, would you, I hate to use the, the dirty word, the I word, but you're like a social media influencer, right? Yeah. And we'll talk about that later. I want to <laughs> talk about that. Um, but uh, so you started this page. And your uh, what was the original goal with with starting the page? Uh, ATX drinker or the whiskey boys? Do we the, want to talk about that at all? We can talk about that too, just because I'm sure they kind of go hand in hand, mm -hmm. right? So, like, how did it all start? How did you, you know, decide to? I basically want the long story of how you ended up here, not having to work like a nine to five job for somebody else. You okay. know what I mean? Like, we talk about that a lot whenever I have a photographer or creative person mm -hmm. on, just kind of like. How okay, so so you're doing this full time now. How did you get there? Because a lot of people are like, Man, I wish that you know, I, I have a passion for food or a passion for you know, nightlife or whatever it is. Like, and I see these guys, everybody follows these guys that go to all the bars, go to all the restaurants, and it's like, Okay, well, how do I get my shit together and like become one of those guys? Sure. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. through other people, I think kind of explaining the route that they went, uh, maybe somebody could start their own thing, you Absolutely, know what I mean? So, yeah. But, yeah, well, that's definitely my life. Um, I was working for Wells Fargo as a oh, banker. Oh, God. So I, you were drinking a lot after yeah, work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then COVID came along. You were getting hammered after work, And dude. then we drank more. Yeah, exactly. You were coming in so hungover, <laughs> just crunching numbers. Oh, yeah. Oh, you pushed dude. through with, like, three monster drinks the next day. Yeah. That helped you. Yeah. So I was the typical, like, nine-to-five guy who, you know, found the job that paid the bills. But same, I was always thinking, what else can I do? How can I, like, find a passion and turn it into a living? Mm -hmm. But I never knew it was going to be. And even when I started 
the Instagram pages, I didn't think that was going to be the job. See, I thought that that was kind of I, I was I kind of had that thought that that was it was never my intentions. Yeah, that you it know, just kind of so, blew up in your face type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that definitely did because you know nowadays it seems like everybody wants to be an influencer or a creator. So I wasn't going to go down that route, especially as like a thirty year old guy. You're like influencers are whack, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Becomes influencer. Yeah, exactly. Just like inevitably two just, years later. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of it. It's like you know you envision the people on TikTok dancing. I'm like, right. yeah. I'm not like, shaking my ass on yeah. Instagram, dude. But if I get some money, I'll do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, I was at the bank for like five years. I started at like 25 and I worked my way up. And then COVID happened. And the bank was closing every other week. Um, well, we were switching uh, people that were working there. So, half the branch would work there and the other half were allowed to stay home. And we got paid. It was amazing. Wow. Um, but my buddy, he lived like right down the street and this is the other whiskey boy on my page. The yeah. Whiskey the boys. whiskey boys. Yeah. So we had nothing to do. So we were like, Hey, what if one night we just do a whiskey tasting? The liquor stores were still open during COVID. Mm -hmm. So we Shout went out to the liquor stores. For yeah, open during kept COVID. us going. Yeah. So we went and we bought like four bottles that were just cheap bottles. We were actually watching a YouTube channel called the whiskey tribe that is in Austin, which I didn't realize oh, yeah, till later. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. They were looking for like a video editor. Oh, I sent cool. Them, I sent them, uh, it was, this was a while ago. I think it was more of a, like, you got to work there like nine to five. It just yeah, wouldn't have worked out with my they're schedule. Doing some big but stuff. Yeah. They're, their pages. I know. I know. I'm familiar with them. Yeah. And the way they did it, like attracted us. So they would do that thing where they go, wow, this is like. Blueberry pancakes with whipped cream and, and you're like, syrup. what the fuck? It just burns my nose when exactly. I try to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of attracted us where we were like, okay, let's try this and we'll start, you know, looking for those notes. Yeah. And how do we figure how do we how do we hack this fucking palate so yes. I can so I can taste I want to taste blueberry muffins too. <laughs> right now all I taste is Jameson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. So uh, you know, the same thing that first weekend, it was like, okay, what am I tasting here? This is you know, oh, this one's actually, you know, smooth is what we would say. Right. It's like the typical word that most people still say to us. Um, and then COVID kept happening. So the next weekend, we had so much fun, you know, that first weekend playing music, just bullshitting, talking. And the next weekend came and we're like, should we do it again? And we picked up four more bottles. And that went on for like two and a half months where we were just like, all right, well, let's cook a steak dinner on the grill. Let's hang out. Let's chat. Maybe we watched like a new Netflix movie that came out. Were you guys like live streaming this? No, we weren't even doing this is before we even started. Oh, this is before you started like mm -hmm. filming anything. Yeah. See, that is I want to pause right there for just a second because that is I feel like such a big thing that people like don't think about when they're trying to get into something. It's mm -hmm. like you kind of have to already be into it. I think a that's, little bit. that's it, right? Like, you have to really actually love it and then you know, do it for the gram. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then I think like a lot of people that that's why they only make it through a fuck, like, you know, somebody sent me a thing the other day that said if you made it to like episode 13 of your podcast or something, you're in the top 1%. Wow. Because so people. many people stop. And I can and even I don't see know that. how true that is. Like, we're starting this other podcast that I was telling you about before we hopped on here. And I even feel that. I mean, I'm a big believer in you just keep going and you grinding. Yeah. But even at like episode five, I'm like, well, the, are we doing this right? Should yeah. we keep doing it? Like there's that thought in the but back of your head. But it's like, it has to be in the hang. Mm -hmm. Like I love, I love the hang of whoever I'm with in here and with my, you know, having somebody on the boards. And it's like that, that I did it in my living room, you know, on Twitch but live before I ever started like, okay, how do we make this look good? How do we make this sound good? Yeah, that's just a great point. It was kind of just, I didn't think anybody would watch it. It was just kind of just for the love of the game mm -hmm. and you guys were doing that same thing well i was in actually essence, with whiskey before you even started putting it on camera you guys were just meeting up having fun trying to figure out this fucking tasting whiskey thing and mm -hmm. trying to learn about it and then you're like okay let's put it on camera you know what i mean yep. i was thinking about you on my way over here because you were doing the music mm -hmm. podcast photography yeah and i was thinking about like how i want to start doing other things just to also help my income you know if yeah. you're just focused on one thing you know i'm a big proponent of not staying in your lane yeah like so. a lot of people are like dude you're just a musician you stay in your lane i'm doing stand i've been doing stand-up for almost you know a year and a half now oh wow and I didn't uh, know that. and it's a grind and i haven't worked there's been times where i haven't been working as hard as i should have and now i'm like but that's like part of the growing pains you kind of learn what you can get away with mm -hmm. like okay i haven't done it in two weeks but somebody put me on a show how's this gonna go and then sometimes it goes good and you're like "Ooh, maybe i don't you have see to, it maybe i don't have to work that hard yeah. and then you do it again and then it doesn't go as good and you're like "Fuck, i need to be out there with everybody every night so that's i've just i'm back on fucking grinding every night now i love that so but but again it's like 
just stay in your lane, dude. You're you're screaming a metal band. You're a photographer. You know what I mean? That's it's what like, I was gonna say. It's like no, I don't. I don't want to. I wouldn't be happy if I was just doing the one thing. And so yeah, do do other stuff, man. And that's it, right? It goes back to like loving it first, right? Which where this where this conversation started. Yes. And I think you're able to do all those different things because you love it. It would be like too much for the average person to be like, I want to make income from three different sources. Right. Yeah. If you're doing three things you hate, it's too much for me. Yeah. And yeah. we're not making a lot of income yet. <laughs> But we'll get there, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where it is. It's like yeah. way too much work for no return in the beginning. Exactly. You know? So you guys were you guys were just getting bottles, having fun. At what point were you like, we we should film this? Like what made you guys want to do was there like a I think, certain night that you guys were like, Okay, we had a lot of fun, like next time we gotta film this thing or like It started off when like Instagram was more pictures, like this mm-hmm. would be four reels. Just and, the good old days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for all the photographers out there. But, you know, it was uh, really just, I think, us following other people. So we mm-hmm. followed, like, some big accounts that would post their Rolexes with whiskeys and stuff like that. Right. Like, oh, that's cool. So The, fl- the clout the clout picks. Yeah, yeah, and they would be good back then. Now that doesn't work anymore, no, which is no, so funny. Yeah, you need more. Yeah, like, you know, uh, who's that guy? Bill Bilzerin? What's his name? Know. You know, the rich oh, guy with all uh, uh, Dan Belzarian or whatever. Him, yeah. I never fall. I never like he never was already canceled or whatever <laughs> happened to him happened to him after like after I heard about him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. Had already, he, he had already come and gone. Yeah. Yeah. But, so it's like we would follow that and we got to the point where we said, OK, let's just start posting the bottles we really like. And we didn't think anything of it. We were more thinking like, oh, this will help us keep track of it. So, right. You know, in two months we go, oh, we're going to the store for something. New Year's Eve is coming up. We get that bottle again, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so we started posting on Instagram pictures of just what bottles we were drinking and maybe gave like a little review below it. Yeah. And then that's when we got our first sign of like, oh, this thing is legit with social media. A distiller reached out to us and was like, hey, can we send you a bottle? And we're like, yeah. A $30 bottle of whiskey? Are you kidding me? Yeah, you can, <laughs> dude. Like that blew our mind. You know what's crazy, guys? You can send us yes. that bottle and we will drink Here's it. Here's my address. Yeah. Oh, wait, I forgot to say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Yeah, um, I think it was Rabbit Hole. Okay, is that like a lo- is that a local? They're in Kentucky. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sweet. they're pretty big. They're pretty big. Um, but so everyone's just kind of trying to get exposure in that scene. They really want to get their bottles in <laughs> the hands of people that are drinking them on camera. And... That same thing happened to me. Really? With a winery, yeah. When I was in Guata- oh, yeah. when I was in Guatemala, I brought it with me, me, Marcus, and Enrique, mm-hmm. and we were drinking it at like Lake Atalon, and they reached out and like, oh my god, that's so awesome! You brought that all the way there. We'll send you a bottle. What's your address? I'm like, can I get a case as well? <laughs> <laughs> he just because fucking like, ran a mile yeah, with yeah. it, dude. <laughs> they're like, they're like, yeah, we'll give you the member price. And so she drove down a whole case of wine plus wow. one. Wow! Holy to me, shit! Dropped it off. That's awesome. Is that a uh, Hunter's Reserve? That, that was that wine that tasted like Dr Pepper, right? Yep. Oh, that shit was ne- fucking yeah. so good, dude. It, it tasted a, like like straight up Dr Pepper. That does sound good, was, but wine. That because I'm not the biggest wine guy, but oh, if you, you can would connect it to that flavors wine, like that. Yeah, you would fuck with that one, dude. It blew my mind. And I'm not. Not even giving it. you the tasting note bullshit. It yeah, tasted yeah, just, like a fucking like a yeah, like, like like a warm like a room temperature non carbonated glass yeah, of Dr like, Pepper. Like a big Dr Pepper note with like a little cola spice and then like a little like kind of lemonadey lemon mm-hmm. acidic finish. Dude, it was fucking yeah. so. Good. I love that. Yeah, you guys are gonna get along great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we could yeah. talk about drink it all day. Oh yeah, yeah dude. and we're going to <laughs> it was a backstay wine company. Shout out! Wow. So they send you this bottle, and then and then what is it like? Okay, we're gonna triple down and just like how does it evolve? Yeah, I think that like gave us our first sign to be motivated, and and that's you know going back to just my life in general. But I've always been somebody that like when I'm into something, I normally excel at it, and I think it's because I just work so hard at it yeah. because I like it. Um, so like even in banking, I just you know, I knew I had to make something of my life, yeah. and I did well, even though it wasn't. Even though like, it wasn't what you were like into. a passion, but <laughs> out of necessity. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. So this was more, I guess you could say, something I was yeah. happy doing. But once I saw that first sign of "here's a free bottle," I was like, "All right, enough is enough. Like we're gonna do something every single day." Yeah. And obviously, this is going to come into factor later with ATM Trigger. We're going to drink every day. <laughs> I know what we need to do. We need to drink every day. And then I got fired from my job. No, okay, that just- <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they didn't like when I was doing my content on my lunch yeah, break. In the back. In the I'll back. Just- yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just, we would shoot like three or four pictures on the weekend and then post it throughout the week. So it would right. be spread out. And, and that page ended up getting pretty big. I mean, we got to like 10,000 followers in like 
a half a year or something like that, which back then felt like it's hard to do. Huge. I did, yeah. You what know? year was that? Uh, it was 20. 2020? Yeah. Yeah. Really hard to do. At yeah. 2020, honestly. So yeah. that was, yeah, that was like pretty crazy for us, especially, you know, as like our own Instagrams had like a thousand followers and right. we never tasted what it was like to have a big page. Mm hmm. Um, so we just rolled with it. We were like, cool. We just had this page called the whiskey boys. Me and him, we reviewed whiskeys, um, just integrated it into our life, whether it was going out to dinner and we brought a bottle or we were trying like cocktails out that were also with whiskey, things like that. Um, but COVID kept happening. And then I always wanted to move to a big city and I had my eyes on, um, Austin before COVID started, but I was like, I can't keep waiting. It was like a year and a half into it. Rents were just going up and yeah. apartments were drying up. I'm like, what I am remember, I going to do? Just I like, moved here in 2022, and it was just we took the first apartment that we could get that mm -hmm. was in a decent area downtown because my girl walks to work. <clears throat> you know what I mean? She's yeah. Drive, and so it's like we and and that's doesn't you know I was like really trying to get her to move to Austin. She's like, well, it's hard for. I'm like, all right, well, then we'll get some place where you can walk to work. You know what I mean? Yep. She got it. She had a job. She could transfer. It's a game changer. Yeah, and so uh, it, but uh, but yeah, we hopped on the first apartment we could get. Like, and it was expensive, and then we got out of there, you know, and yeah. then everything's like chilling out now, which mm -hmm. is kind of nice. I know prices have been amazing yeah. recently. So, how did it tra 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 change over from the whiskey boy, whiskey bros, to I'm gonna start my own thing now that I'm was it like, was that the plan when you were moving here? You're like, I'm gonna fucking hit the ground and start. Never had that as my okay. plan, still never thought it would be a job. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, 10,000 followers isn't enough to, I mean, we weren't even seeing money at that time, right? Um, but I came here, got another job at a bank, and I was just, like, enjoying living in Austin. Um, the Whiskey Boys grew to, like, 20,000 followers, so that was still doing well. And I was starting yeah. to get, like, dinner invites in Austin, which was kind of cool. Oh, really? But same thing. Never thought it would be anything right. bigger. Um, but whiskey's tough, right? When it's 110 degrees, I kept going to bars and being like, I'm a whiskey enthusiast. I have to drink it neat. And I'm sweating on the patio while everybody else is drinking frozen Mars. Right. So I really did fall in love with just like cocktails. And there's so many bars here that have amazing it's bartenders. It's crazy. It's crazy. I feel like sometimes I like think I understand how many bars are here. And then like you go to a new area yep. that, you've and they have really, a section. that you've never been to. Yep. And it's like what Northeast or whatever. You know, of downtown, 10, 15 minutes, and you're like, it's like you turn a corner, and there's like a whole nother food and bar scene over here. Yeah. You're like, like oh you my could God. stay in your neighborhood and probably be fine. Yeah, for most I people. live in, I live over. Yeah, I'm not gonna say where I live, but I don't live far from here. And it's yeah. and it's uh, it's yeah, they're building new shit all next to me and shit. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's 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 rad. So. You're like, I'm sick of drinking. I want to drink cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> we got to change our platform, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that crossed my I mind. I want to drink a frozen mark sometime. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, should we just maybe evolve the Whiskey Boys? Yeah. But I will say there was also an issue of him being in New Jersey, me being in Austin. Mm -hmm. That made it challenging. So it gave me the freedom to kind of do my own thing at the same point. Mm -hmm. um, but then have more of this like wide range with the type of content I make. Yeah. And I just also love the Austin scene. So I was able to dive more into that. Um, so I just got the idea and when I remember when I posted it, I was like, oh, this is like a backup page to the whiskey boys and I'll like post from time to time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, feel free to follow if you want. Like that's my attitude towards it. Um, and then started it, just post a couple cocktails, same pictures at the time. Um, oh, and you're doing some repost action. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Like, you know, going to bars in Austin mm -hmm. and I'll be like, I got whiskey here. Um, and then what really like shot it off to start was I did a tournament of the best bars in Austin. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like I, a, the bracket thing? The bracket. Yeah. yeah. So I posted that on the ATX Drinker. Same thing. Didn't think much of it. It took my page from like 3,000 followers to 10,000 followers like Damn, in like wow. two months. Yeah. That's crazy. That's awesome. I think it's because one, a lot of people are passionate about their favorite bars, so they, they wanted to vote for them. Mm -hmm. But it really made the other bars like share it to their story. So then people saw it, then they came to my page, wanted to see the outcome of it. Right. People just love the idea of being able to vote for these different things, mm -hmm. supporting their their local <clears throat> their local spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like Gary V says, I'm I'm a big follower of him. Mm -hmm. um, like double down on what works. So right. after I did that first one, I was like, I'm gonna keep doing these. I mm -hmm. did like you did a burger one, burger mm -hmm. wings. I try to keep it at least bar related. So burgers yeah. are like, like bar food. The, yeah, yeah. So I did like burgers, wings, pizza. Yeah, you'll have to do like a happy hour one. Yeah, I've I've done. Happy or have hour. you done a happy yeah. hour one? Okay. Yeah, yeah and then I've done also like dude. you know I. Got to update them all the time because happy hours are constantly changing. Yeah. But I'll do, like, a post of, like, my five favorite happy hours this mm -hmm. month or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that just that. took off. 
yeah, that that was it took and then, off, and, and then just... all the bars now know who you are, and they're kind of like they might be like, hey, come do like a feature or something. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that's another thing I wanted. Without talking too much about, you know, money and finances and stuff, like. I think still, like, if you're listening to this conversation right now, you're like, okay, so where does this guy start making money? You yeah, know what I mean? Okay, so. Right, and so it's like if you wanted to do this for a job, it's like how do you, at what, when did it ch- change into the full-time thing? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And were you working at Wells Fargo when you moved here? Yeah. Oh, so you transferred over and worked yeah, at a Wells to Fargo? to a different Wells Fargo. Okay. And it was funny because uh, my page was starting to grow like crazy at one point, and, like, customers would come in and be like, you're that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, what? You're like, this is weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then Dude, he, you're the guy that fucking drinks every day. Yeah, like, <laughs> what are we you just doing look here? alike. You're, you're supposed money? to be drinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, I do have to pay my bills. Yeah, exactly. but, uh, <laughs> That's funny. And then, yeah, like, my coworker saw it. And then eventually, like, it was getting so big that, like, the, the my branch manager's manager saw it. And then brought it up to my manager, and then I was like, "No, it's just like a side thing I do on the weekends because I love cocktails." Like, because they yeah, not... leave me alone. What the fuck? Yeah, so they did, it ended up being fine. Yeah, um, that is weird that they thought it was for a second. Like, what were they thinking? Like that it was I like, know. "Are you drunk at work? Or are you like... doing something?" Maybe I don't know if the money was a concern because I ended up becoming an investment banker, mm. um, and you're not allowed to make income outside of your job unless you tell them. Oh. Okay, interesting. So I don't know if that gets had... hairy, I guess, when you're doing investment stuff. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, you know, once the page got to, like, 40,000 followers in, like, the first year, um, that's where, like, I would start getting small deals. Sometimes bars would reach out, but it's rare to make a lot of money from bars. I would make more money from, you know, like, ACL's coming to town, and Avaca is going to be a sponsor there. And I'd be like, hey, while I'm in town, we want to work with you. What's your rates? And I remember the first time I got that, I was like, what are you talking about, my rates? Like, I had no idea. But luckily, I had other influencer friends that I would, like, reach out to. And yeah. they would tell me, like, my worth. And I was like, well, do I do, like, $200? You know? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, no, like, with 40000 like bro. They're like, yeah. Well, like, yeah. I have 40000 It was like 1000 And then even, like, double that sometimes, you know, yeah. depending on what brand you're working with. Uh, so I was like, whoa. And then more of, like, when that started coming in every week, I was like, oh, I'm doing the math. I'm like, I'm getting close to making what I'm making at Wells Fargo. And I think when I finally hit that point where I was, I mean, I might have been I like 80,000 followers at this time. It happened fast. I mean, I've yeah. only had the page for two and a half years now, and I'm at 130,000 followers. So that just makes me feel like, I feel like AI is going to automate all that shit. They're, all it's that, gonna, bank, no, all it's that gonna, bank shit. Yeah. And then, and then all the Anthonys are going to be able to go and do their ATX drinker shit. Yeah. You know what 100%. I mean? hundred percent. Oh, like the banking industry, like that's we the, could have a whole pocket. Like, and I don't mean to, like, go off topic too much, but I've been thinking and talking to my friends a lot about, like, the AI shit. Yeah. And, like, my other creator friends are, like, worried about it and stuff. And it's like, yeah, yes, and I think that, like, it will free up some, like, like you, you're going to have to cre- kind of be forced to create more. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be more value in, like, what we can create and do that AI can't do, 100%. right? Which is go to all the bars. And, and this is my experience at a bar. You're not going to get a, you know, AI is not going to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. So, but AI is going to be able to do the banking thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like in crunch numbers and stuff. So it's just, it seems like they better treat their employees nice because <laughs> their employees <laughs> well, will it, go off and do some side hustle. It shit. wasn't my favorite thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. Thing. It was one of those things where every time you came into, I'm sure everybody deals with this at the nine to fives. Yeah. But like your boss would come in in the morning and you'd be like, you know, we have to talk about your numbers. <sighs> And it's like, you know, it's short-lived. Office so if you do well shit. that week, the next week, we're like, well, let's start over. Yeah, office space shit. Yeah, The exactly. TPS reports are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, well. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was very much like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you so you start, so you get that first deal. Who was the first deal with, can you say? Oh, man, I don't remember exactly. I wish I do. Yeah. I mean, I remember I did, like, a seltzer brand once. Mm-hmm. And that was like, yeah, I think before I, would, I asked, like, my friends, it would be like, yeah, 400 bucks or something like right. that. Right. And uh, they would make you shoot that typical ad. Where right. You're like, this is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that started happening, like, a ton. And then once I reached that point, I was like, man, I think I can go in and quit. But I had, like, this anxiety because, mind you, I'm now 32, I think, when I quit. Walking away from your career. From your career that you 
you know, for me, my parents were like, you did it. The guy who didn't finish college that finally got a job. He's an investment banker. Yeah. My sweet boy. And I'm like, I'm going to become a creator. I'm going to get drunk every day, mom, and on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the ones. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm not like I'm giving finance advice online. So, mom, uh, <laughs> little change up. <laughs> We are going to switch over to drinking every day. Every day. And we're gonna be we're gonna be just fine. <laughs> you remember that concern that our family yeah. has about yeah, alcoholism? alcoholism? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're gonna I'm be gonna doing run with that. that. Yeah, I'm we're gonna, gonna run double with down that. on that. <laughs> I think it's actually our family's superpower, and no one ever could harness it correctly except for me. I know it. I have the keys. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh to fast forward, I'm not doing well recently. Not kidding. <laughs> exactly. I uh, have been in the hospital a lot. Uh, <laughs> so I got like two years to well, live. I was going to say, well. from what we were joking about earlier, how you would show up to work hungover on Monday and like be oh, yeah. slamming three monsters to get through work. It's probably in a weird way. You're probably healthier now mm. than you were when you were grinding at the bank. Yeah. No right? sleep, stress. Yeah. Yeah. There's a factor of that. I, I'm a big believer especially working at the bank, I would see like these people that were 55, 60, and they're just stressed all the time. Yeah. And this one di guy, he died of a heart attack. And I remember saying like, every time he came in, he was mad at something. Yeah. So I think that sometimes like stress can impact you worse than, yeah, this alcohol that you're drinking that, yeah, it's, sure. it, it's gonna beat up your body, um, but you don't know the type of things like, you know, having serious debt can do to you. Yeah. And you're like fighting with your wife at home and like, dude, yeah. so kids I don't. won't talk to you or some shit. Yeah. yeah. That's another conversation, but I'm very passionate that if you don't over drink, which I over drink, so I might not be the best to talk about this, but um, if you like, you know, moderately drink, I think it's better for you than not drinking um, unless you have a problem. Um, but there's like a lot of people out there that are like, oldest man in Kentucky lived to 101 and he drank whiskey every day. Yeah. You know, and then you see these other people that like, I'm sober, but then they go home and then they fight with their family all the time. Yeah. And, you know, so uh, I think there's something deeper. It's not that. Will you look benefits. up, T, will you just Google like, is it healthy to drink occasionally? I know this is like a common thing that gets brought up. And I remember when we were growing up, I think they told us like in health class, because you're 30. 34 now. Okay, I'm 30, Four. almost 30, or no, I am 33. I can't remember. Birthdays don't matter to me anymore now that I'm 30, I in my 30s. Um, but I, I feel like I remember like a chart where they were like, you know, like this much is too much. Like, you know, like a shot is this many beers. Yeah. You remember that kind yeah. of thing? And they were like, I remember a thing, like even if you, like some say it's healthy if you drink like one beer or one glass of wine or something. And then I heard in more recent years that they revised that and said, you know, Huberman got on or something and yeah, said, he, like... don't listen to him. So <laughs> Don't listen to him. Thing, the first thing that pops up, it says, if you're in good shape, moderate drinking makes you 25 to 40% less likely to have a heart attack, what? stroke, or hardened arteries. How? Probably because of the what you were talking about, stress. You this, know? May so. be, this may I be... In, so. Well, this says this may be in part... Uh, because small amounts of alcohol can raise your HDL, good cholesterol levels. Heavy drinking. Web, WebMD. What do you got? Ba, 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 ba. That first picture was Gets awesome. <laughs> Go back up to that first picture of that guy with the beer on his head. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's Ozempic to the right as an ad. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay, come on. Get I did read active. that somewhere, and it said something like, one or two drinks a day is good for you. Anything less could be worse, and anything more can be worse. But so that's, that's the thing is, like, what's a drink, right? And that's – who does yeah, just drink one? how do they one? measure it? Yeah. Nobody. Nobody just drinks one. A so. Psychopath. See, that's serial killer behavior. Yeah. Like, after you're done with a nice killing, you're going to go pour yourself a little out of the, out of the crystal. You yeah. Know, that's like American Psycho. Like, yeah. You know what I Which mean? Which we yeah. all have that dream. <laughs> <laughs> Prevents kidney stones? Yes. Oh, interesting. I thought that would be a concern. Hell yeah. Those who drink beer, 33. Oh, so beer's better for kidney Read it for us, T. I don't like to okay, read. Okay, regular modern drinkers are less likely to get kidney stones. 41% less likely for those who drink beer. 33% for wine drinkers. Part of the reason may be that alcohol, like caffeine and coffee and tea, makes you pee more often. Mm. Oh, this makes sense now. Okay. Mm. Wow. I, pee, I be peeing. Do you be that peeing? makes sense. Yeah, I do be peeing. Dude, I, I be, be pissing. pissing. Yeah. I be pissing, man. Yeah. Uh, that helps clear out the tiny crystals that form stones. Drinking too much, though, and you can get dehydrated mm. and increase your risk of kidney stones. That makes sense, though. If you're that, drinking yeah. beer and pissing all the time, you got a constant so, flow going. So yeah. that, that leads me. This all leads me to uh, ask you, what's the what's the regimen, dude? What's the mm. what is the regimen for keeping you in tip top drinking shape? Because well, you have to have like some kind of a routine or something because you're out there all the time, dude. Yeah, I'm pretty intense it's with insane. my health side of it. Um, recently, I've been cutting back on the drinking. Yeah. Before I was doing like there was a one week I think I went six days 
you know, and was this, that, yeah. I, I was averaging like four a six, week, six, maybe five, six days drinking. Yeah. Okay. And then I was averaging like four or five a, a week, yeah. like four, five. And how drinks. many of those, when you say you're going to go out drinking, when you go and do these, these things and these recaps and you make all these videos, how often are you, uh, like getting hammered or like how drunk do you get? You know what I mean? Because like. I feel like there's probably some people that would go out and just do sippies and share it with their friends or like to get the content, right? Yeah, it's not me. I feel like you're you're living the experience. I'm a drinker. Dude. Yeah, you're yeah. living the experience. The problem dude. is I go out with my girlfriend too. So we don't want to go out and just shoot content and then be done with the day. Yeah. We want to then have some fun. Which I love her. She's amazing. We have to all hang out. <laughs> yeah, I, everybody me that my, meets my, her love my her. My fiance and, and her need to be friends. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, I met her and I met you guys oh, when yeah, we went the, to the distillery yep. and at the game too, which I want to talk about. I want to flex a little bit. We <laughs> we went to a Longhorns game like the first time we met or second time we met yep. or something. And we got to go on the field, which like – so crazy. That was like a highlight moment. The the places that liquor and cameras will take you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's like, dude, we got to go on the they were they shot the gun off right or the cannon off right next Insane. to us and shit. And it was like I've had I have friends that have lived here their whole lives that are like in their forties <laughs> and they're like, What the fuck? Yeah. You got to go on the fucking Longhorn field? <laughs> You know I remember I mean? we were like we're walking down the field as the game was going on and we were like high fiving people in the crowd yeah. from the field. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. Insane. Dude. It was fucking. Shout out to Still Austin for yeah. that. Yeah, but so so yeah, my girlfriend who everybody loves. Like she, I always joke and say just to give her a little plug, everybody loves her more than me, um, <laughs> because she's like the person that deserves to be in Austin. She's like a hippie. She just loves like dogs and people, and she doesn't care about the dollar she makes. She would like sleep in Zilker in a tent. If, <laughs> like, like she's made she's for a real Austin. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where I was like, okay, I'm not that far. I'm not, yeah. you're, that's not she's happening. She's at Eeyore's birthday every year. Yeah. So she's that person. <laughs> awesome. <like. laughs> um, but we go out, you know, like, and I don't like to go out by myself. I'll either go out with friends or her. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's say she's off on Thursday from work. I'll be like, great, let's go shoot content. So we'll go and we'll shoot like two or three bars. Mm -hmm. And then. We, in one evening? In one evening. Okay. And we'll have three to four drinks per bar. Whew, nice. And each. we'll share. Well, sometimes each, sometimes we share. Okay. Well, they each got to try something different. Exactly. Right. And I have to show all the drinks off because it's right. for work. Right. <laughs> we're working, honey. <laughs> we are, we're at work, honey. You're just red in the face. <laughs> yeah. Just we're working, honey. Sweating about the... <laughs> <laughs> That, um, so that is that is cool. So it, it is kind of it seems like you got it down to somewhat of a chill schedule yeah. a little bit to where it's not like you're out every single night with your phone in your hand, you know, because I think that's what maybe the perception that like oh, when people follow these people is. like uh, I, I like the David Douglas guy. Mm -hmm. I tried to get him in here. He was like he was like, no, thank you. I was like, damn, David <laughs> maybe he'll do it now. I think know, most people it. don't say yes, though. Yeah. That's the only, and I feel I like, you know, and I understand that most content creator guys are not podcasters. It's not the same like muscle. Sure. You know what I mean? But um, I do feel like it, it's fun to hear from you guys mm. because I think like what I was saying before we started, like a lot, like everyone's used to seeing you like in short form, like doing your doing your format. Yeah. And it's like now they get to kind of see things unbuttoned and learn more about you, which I think would be cool. But so David Douglas, if you still want to come do the podcast, I would love to have you on, buddy. We can eat some food. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that guy, dude. His, his so, story is interesting. So, so like, I was friends with him in the, in the beginning, and he had, like, no followers for a while, too. Yeah. Um, I think he was at, like, 5,000, if I'm not mistaken, for, like, Half a year, if not a year. Yeah, just his, he blew up. His voiceovers are so silly. He's like, he's a he little, he's a little poet. He's a little writer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then yeah, it's just like I think he went to over a hundred thousand or something in a year. Yeah. So definitely crushing it. Yeah. Um, but I, the what I was saying is that the I feel like the per, the perception from just a follower watching that stuff is that like, damn, these guys like, do they ever get a second to just stop and smell the roses? Are they always fucking recording shit every time? But it sounds like you do you go out and not record stuff? Do you ever like go it's out? It's rare, but yes, yes. Yeah. Like I have that's what makes this so challenging is that time is limited. Mm -hmm. And then I want to have time with my friends. Mm -hmm. I want to have time where I just relax on my own or with my girlfriend. And then I want to shoot the content. When play becomes work, right? Yeah. And that's exactly it. So there is many times where I am with my friends and my girlfriend and I do shoot content. Yeah. And do I'm they just, troll like, you a little bit? They're like, oh, Anthony's got to get the fucking shot, dude. Do Sometimes. They, yeah, give you some, yeah some but for the for most it? part, they think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. But they'll always be like, look. Yeah. Or like, tag me and stuff. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. So that, that's it's been pretty wild. So um, you guys will go You guys will go on like a Thursday or Friday. You hit three or four spots mm -hmm. and get and a we'll couple do drinks like, to each. We'll do like two or three days a week. 
yeah. usually. So she'll be off like on Saturday then, and then we'll do Saturday as well. Um, but like going back to the, how much we drink, mm-hmm. I mean, we've had a 20 plus almost 30 drink day. Before. A crawl. Yeah. A we're like, crawl. like I said, we'll shoot three bar reels. Yeah. And then we're like, well, now we can have fun. Because we yeah. didn't view that as fun, we view that as work. Right. So they're like, "Well, now we already want to go to drink." Yeah. Now we. Now we're. Gonna, yes. Now we're actually going to go drink and have fun. <laughs> like, the other night we like ended up at Barbarella at two a.m. and we're like, "What are we doing here?" You yeah. Know? So it it ends up happening where we're like, "Wow, we just really started at two, mm-hmm. and we just went home at two. Yeah. So Holy those shit. days happen and beat me up, but I make it a priority. Like I haven't drank the last three days. So, nice. well, and then well. now I'm back thanks at it right now. Thanks for breaking the seal. Should we try the second one real quick? I'm down to try this one. Let's do this. I feel like this will be a good one to give them a shout out on like a real Yeah, what is later. it? So this is Iron Root. It's one of the best Texas whiskeys that are out there. This is your camera right here. Oh, perfect. Um, this is their cigar blend, which oh, is usually ooh. meant to be with a cigar. Can we smoke weed with it? You <laughs> probably <laughs> could. <laughs> um, but I will say they're still good by, without a cigar. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, I I love a lot of the cigar blends. The only thing I'll say is they can be drier, and then when you have them with a cigar, it'll bring out some different flavors that you didn't get when you were just sipping Hmm. it neat. So I've noticed they'll get like a lot more sweeter and fruitier, maybe because like the cigar has those tobacco notes or those drier notes as well. T, you want to look that up? I've never. Why does cigars? Why does look up? Why does cigars change change the taste of whiskey? We're learning things today, dude. Not that. That's panties. Thank you, brother. Here, I'll get tea. <laughs> so how'd you hear about these guys? Where are they from? <coughs> so this one was actually sent to me. So it's my first time trying it. Um, I, uh, I wish I looked it up. It's, uh, what is it? Hold on. I want to see what this whiskey is. Whiskey's complex taste pairs well with cigars, subtle aroma, yeah, developing it in a symphony of sensations for the senses. <laughs> the earthy aromas of cigar, for instance can be complemented by the smokiness of the peated scotch whiskey. While the sweetness of bourbon can counteract the spice. Oh, wait. Hmm. Get some ASMR. Oh, I like that. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, so this is definitely, I would, I want to say top five best Texas whiskeys, but it's hard. It's probably top ten. (laughs) (laughs) Clip that. Clip that. Clip that. Clip that. Are you 21? Yes. Let's see. Bing. Iron Harbinger? Harp Harbinger? Iron Harbinger? What is a Harbinger? I feel like I've heard that word before. I don't know specifically, but I know Isn't it's one of their popular like releases. A holder of something? I don't know. It's a really cool logo and shit though. Whiskey's just cool, man. It, Something about it is just cool. It it's enhances rugged. everything. It's rugged. You yeah. know, like whiskey's not sexy. Yeah. Like some alcohol, they try to sell sexy. They do, you know, like Ciroc, is sexy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, now Ciroc is like Dollar Tree cheap shit. But I know. Like, Remember, it had its time with Diddy. Dude. Yeah, Diddy, oh, dude. Yeah, Diddy. We're both huge fans. Yeah, we're both huge fans. Yeah, no, we're not. <laughs> we're not. Yeah. No, we're not. Free Diddy, dude. Free Diddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's just talk about Diddy. Free my man, dude. Free my man. No, I'm just kidding. Fuck Diddy. No, but it's true. Like. You know, I mean, vodka had its time where like vodka martinis were the sexy thing. Mm, I don't know what that is. Vodka is that vodka? But yo, vodka, okay. vodka. Yeah. Oh, you said I thought you said vodka, it, like V A C A. Oh, Sorry. it's probably like That's a Jersey, Jersey accent. Yeah, there's so many things I do where people are like, "You said it wrong, you freaking idiot!" Like yeah. in my videos. Yeah. Um, but really, it'll be like my Jersey accent. It's just it's your coming, Jersey's yeah. coming through. Like well, I, I used a, to say water, and yeah, now I say water. I, I change a, it. So uh, one of my best friends out here, Reed. We talk about Reed on the podcast all the time. His uh, girlfriend Allie is from Philly. And she'll be like, she'll be like, so guys, uh, yeah, I was at the bar and like it was such a good time, but I was so drunk, I had to get some water. And she like, <laughs> she like just like so there's like a one word that she <laughs> yeah. just slips into it, and you're like, whoa, yep. Like she doesn't have any other accent. My girlfriend she says still water. says it like that yeah. for the most part. That's hilarious. Did you find out anything to you about um, cigars? I'm still looking. All right. Um. But yeah, so let's I mean, try this. I, I would recommend. Cheers, buddy. Cool. My mouth is like juicy from sipping this, making water. Oh, this see, this one smells more like rubbing alcohol to me. Like no no shade, but like just that's that's the note that I'm getting for I mean, it. It definitely smells like stronger than the last one. It could be a higher <laughs> fruit too. It smells thicker Woo! too. Let's see, fifty seven percent. The previous was forty eight percent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This that's has, good. This one has more. Body. This one tastes like a yeah. bar- more like barrel. Yeah. I'm getting more peat moss. A little more smokiness, maybe. This, no. No. There's no peat. <laughs> okay. You're probably getting more oak. See, though. I don't know anything. Well, 
It's definitely the oak. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It says dried cranberry, chocolate, and then dried cedar. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm getting a wood flavor. Yeah. So it's the wood for sure. No, but so many people say like smoky with wood. That's just the toastiness. And of it's the like oak richer. Like yeah. it's more syrupy. And this is a than, than the anything? other one. Yeah. That one tasted kind of thinner to me. Mm-hmm. See, I'm getting it. Yeah. I'm getting it. And I have to say, this gives me that example of what I was saying before that I guarantee if we pull the cigar out right now, mm-hmm. this would turn into a sweeter whiskey mm. with the cigar. Yeah. But without it, it's just dry and well, fuck. <laughs> no, but I like I like it both I wish ways. We had one. It depends on your mood, you know? Yeah. I bet you the weed would open it up too. Might have to try that in a little bit. Um, do you care if I smoke? I don't care. All right. I don't smoke, but. All right. Um, oh, here's a random question that I wanted to ask you, dude. Um, and I kind of wanted to save this, but I'll do it right now. I think it's perfect time. So have you ever gotten, like, super drunk off of a certain, like, cocktail or liquor or that you, like, can't drink anymore? <laughs> or, like, or that there was a, maybe even if there was a period, you know what I mean, where you, like, because I, 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 everyone has those stories. I think mine is kind of like rum. Like, from Barbarossa. You remember Barbarossa back in the day? Yeah. Yeah, that was, like, the cheap rum that underage kids would drink. Yeah, I don't think I've, like, drank it a lot, but oh, I know what it horrible is. horrible spiced rum, dude, and, like, Captain Morgan. Like, too many nights on the Morgan. <laughs> Where I'm just like, I don't ever need rum ever again. Yeah. Unless it's like mixed in with a bunch of sugary frozen Sometimes shit. rum is like that. Yeah. I mean, I my uh, guilty history, that guilty, that I feel guilty about. I don't know how you say it. but yeah. Not uh, guilty pleasure, the yeah, opposite like, of a guilty pleasure. Yeah, the opposite. Yeah. Um, is that I was a little hood boy back in the day. Oh, shit. So, like, I used to wear, like, long white tees. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know. It you was were just a like, wankster, dude. Yeah, man. Ah, I used to listen yes. to like Fifty Cent. Yes, Do you have a picture, dude? I, I probably have something somewhere. Oh. If you find, if you can find it, airdrop it to him. I want to see that. No, we gotta see fucking thug. I wish out I knew Anthony. where there would be one to pull up quick. Yeah. Did you um, wear your hat to the side and shit? Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Yes, dude. So to add on to that, I think my was like hypnotic. Oh my god. Do you remember dude. Hypnotic Taylor? Yeah. <laughs> we have a really bad story about that. So uh, yeah, I think like 10th grade was like we would throw parties. Yeah. And we would down hypnotic bottles me and my friends. Yeah. I remember like Ooh. throwing up or something from it. <sighs> so that was the thing. <laughs> that was the thing. I would never oh drink that now. Oh my god. You sure if I if I had some if I was like I, would well, try. I have some right here. I would try. <laughs> I, funny, I have some right here. I'm like, how this. did you know? Yeah. I'm like Nardwar or whatever <laughs> yeah, that guy yeah, that yeah. Like, like, knows everything. That would be inc- back in, when you were in 10th grade, remember this? <laughs> <laughs> just see me sweat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not again. I think that Please would be no. awful for all of us, especially me. Dude, one with both you guys. Yeah, one time I went. I went to. <laughs> we went to Vegas for his his. Uh, it was my twenty first birthday it was like. All right, let me tell the fucking story on my podcast, dude. <laughs> it's my no, birthday. it's my. <laughs> it was my birthday trip. Okay. Yeah, it was his birthday trip. We went. Him and his twin brother. We went to Vegas, and I was nineteen. We were nineteen. Damn. And I had a fake ID. So you guys knew each other for a while. Yeah, I've known him since seventh grade. Wow. Yeah, and he just moved out here from Portland. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so now we're fucking that. having a blast. Shout out, Matias. Shout out, my best bud, Matias. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Um, love you too. And it's cool to integrate him with all my friends, all my comedian friends, and my barbecue friends, and my music friends, and they all are like, "He, this guy's awesome." You oh, know, like, that's a good feeling. Yeah. Austin is like a guy like this. Austin will just like snatch that guy. Yeah. You know, just be like, "You're one of us now, brother." Heck yeah. You know, but uh. But so we went to Vegas for his birthday. My mom got us uh, like a penthouse suite at this timeshare that we had, and it cost us each eleven dollars a person. Okay, because it was like super cheap. She like bought it on points or whatever, right? Wow. And um, we went, and so I'm gonna talk a little shit about Matthias first, and then I'm gonna get, talk a little shit about me. So Matthias was Matthias and Marcus mm-hmm. were uh, his twin brother. They were like. They, and I remember this vividly, so don't try to question me on this. I remember this vividly. They were dead set on finding a suit for some reason. When they were they wanted they were in Vegas, they wanted to buy a suit. Uh, yeah. So they were like, let's go to the suits. Let's go look for suits. We, I think I know this cheap. Let's go to the mall and look for suits. So we spent a lot of time just kind of walking around. And I was a dumb, drunk, you know, 19-year-old that like, oh, this is my first time in Vegas. I want to get fucked up. I want to party. You know, I want to go to a strip club. Like, you guys are being fucking lame. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and in retrospect, it sounds like a great trip. Like, going around <laughs> trying to find a suit sounds like a great time. So we're there in our last uh, our last evening, 
and it's like nine o'clock or something. And one of the guys we're with goes, Hey gang, I've got, we're in a mall at like the Venetian, you know what I mean? Where it like rains from the yeah. ceiling and shit. Cause we wanted to see the rain and the ceiling. And they're like, Hey gang, I've got an idea. Let's get to bed early on our last night here. Let's get to bed early and we'll wake up early and we'll get a nice brunch before we hit the airport. And well, I was who, like, who said this? And this was like, I don't know, one of his, probably him. No, I'm just kidding. I don't <laughs> no, remember. I don't remember. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I remember, remember this so vividly because everything else after this, I really don't remember. But this is, this, wow. this is these are my last <laughs> memories. And there was this weird situation that happened where I, they were like, everybody agreed except me. I wanted to go get fucked up. And everyone was like, no. And so he was like, or, or uh, I, I was like, I want to get fucked up. No, but whatever. I'm just going to do what everybody else wants to do and be mad about it. So we're leaving this mall to go back to the hotel or whatever. And this guy runs into our friend uh, in the mall and goes, hey, I like your shirt. And then he goes, I like your shirt. And they go, we should trade shirts. And so they trade shirts. And then this guy's like, any, any, you guys want to do cocaine in the bathroom? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was Ian and that guy. Yeah, and you guys were 19? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thank God. Somebody blessed me with, with some party yeah, on this yeah. trip, which is like becoming a sightseeing trip. And how was it like before that? Were you guys actually going out? or I mean, we were just, just drinking sights- all day. We, Well, we were okay. sightseeing and like, yeah, drinking illegal drinks, you know, like with the fake ID and everything. Okay, so a little bit of drinking. A little bit of, and the free, uh, they don't card you at the slots. Okay. You know what I mean? So we're drinking at the slots. Well, that's the pretty shit, dope. The shitty, you know, so we're having fun. 19-year-olds in Vegas is kind of crazy. Yeah. Honestly, I was five, say, five like, 19-year-olds at the hotel room in Vegas no, is kind of... No, I think you were 20 because I was 21 and you're not that much younger than me. Was you were not 21. No, it was oh, two you weeks after my birthday. You yeah, were like yeah, 20. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I was underage. Sorry. Yeah. I, had my, okay. I, had a, I had a fake ID. But uh, so so we go in the bathroom to do the cocaine with this guy. I think it was me and you, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so and then he... I, well, I, I backed out. Yeah. Let me, I, <laughs> let me tell the story because I think I remember it pretty well. He, he went into one stall and we went into another stall. And he, we hear him do his. And then he hands us the bag over the top and he goes... Just like don't take too much, right? <laughs> and I don't. This is my first time. Never didn't know what to do, and so I poured like two big fat ones, and and uh, and I gave it back to him, and he I think was like upset or just high or whatever. But he was like up. He he stormed out of the bathroom basically, and that caused Matthias to f- totally freak out, and he was <laughs> like, "I'm out of here. I'm done with this." So I'm sitting there in this bathroom stall by myself with two lines of coke on the toilet paper thing. It's so gross, dude. Oh my God. You know what I mean? The yeah. metal toilet paper yeah. thing on the long one. And so I just go, I, you know, I just did them both. And for then your first time is for insane. my first, yeah. And then and then I was basically just on one like the whole <laughs> night. So we're like, oh, I'm gonna, we're gonna fucking party. We're gonna fucking party. And I go into a CVS and I buy a. This is where the story all comes back and and it, and it makes sense, right? Why why we're bringing this up? Yeah. So. Uh, I buy with my fake ID, just going, you know, like just like a like a total <laughs> crackhead with my fake ID. It's like it's a different guy on the fake ID. It's not me. It's not one of those that's my face and a different birthday. This is it's terrible. A, it's a different it's dude. It's a completely different dude who's like thirty. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm twenty. And so I go in there. I get a handle of, uh, I get a, a fifth of hypnotic. And a handle of Ye- Jaeger and a handle of Crown Royal Black, <laughs> uh, and I, and I've got it like in. And the lady's like, "Is this you?" And I'm like, "It's fucking me, okay." <laughs> and she was like, "All right, just get out of here." Wow. You know. And so we go out there. As soon as I walk out there, the the half gallon of Jaeger falls through my uh, pa- paper bag and shatters on the strip. And I'm I'm like screaming because I'm so angry at it. And there's like a cop kind of like you know circling like like walking around like trying to figure out what's going what's all this noise and the guys are like dude there's a cop we got to get the fuck out of here like quit being an asshole and so i we basically get back to the hotel room i pour crown royal and and crown royal black with hypnotic <laughs> turn into like a like a thick like, green i think no, it was it called was like a hulk a gr- it was a gray like it looked like concrete mix. I was trying. <laughs> I think to, it's supposed to be the whole. I was trying to do the reason I got that is because I was listening to Mac Dre a lot. Okay, that's why I got it because <laughs> that's what he would rap I was about. Say, I think mixing. that's the yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, so I mixed that for everybody, and and I enter the room 
and I, I've been collecting. You know, remember in Vegas they like they flash those little cards at you for like escorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yep. I I started in drunken cocaine spiral. I was collecting all those from everybody. <laughs> like Pokemon cards. Like Pokemon cards. Yeah. And so I get back to the hotel room. I kick the door open. I'm like, we're partying. I got liquor, and I start throwing these escort cards everywhere. And there's just like five sober unhappy dudes oh, just no. looking at me, like <laughs> you fucking loser. You know what I mean? And I just. And I just like I don't know. I dagger. I basically poured Crown Royal and Hypnotic for everybody. Nobody took a single sip, so I was wow. like, "Fuck you guys!" And I drank them all oh. and proceeded to like violently black out. How was the next day? <laughs> the next day, everyone was everyone was mad at me. We're sparing a lot of details for the There's podcast. We're we're not going to go into a lot of the details <laughs> for the podcast. But um, but the next day, my ankle was sprained. Compl- I couldn't walk on it. Like, it was so painful. I had to limp through the airport. Nobody would look at me or talk to me. So I was crying on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> like, actually. I was, like, actually crying. We were all giving you the silent yeah, treatment. Yeah, everyone was giving me the silent treatment. And I was li- actually crying. My ankle was swollen. And, you know, I think I became well, a better whole, man after your, that. Your whole body was cut up. Oh, yeah. Because of broken glass. Yeah. So they were trying to hand me water. This is one detail we'll share. They were trying to hand me water. Throughout the night, and I'd be like, "Fuck that!" And I was like throwing it on the ground, and just it would yeah. Break. I mean, I would be the yeah. same guy that's and like then, frustrated with that. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then uh, and then there's there's a picture somewhere that I have to get it from Marcus. He's it's got like, it on an old phone. It's, it's like uh, it's like yeah, it's saved in a file called Life Insurance or something on his. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just it's like blackmail photo for me. <laughs> but I was laying naked in broken glass, and they threw a towel over me and took a picture of me. Oh, just that's like, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> there's videos like, too. Don't like Luke's or oh like uh, like like Anakin Skywalker in that one Star Wars where he has one. <laughs> he's like a booger crawling out of the lava. You know? Oh my god! <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> 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 And the it was a crazy crazy drunk story. I guess I guess it, it makes sense to share a crazy drunk story, right? I know it's it, kind of no, off, it's fitting. Off, it's fitting. It's fitting, right? Yeah. But but uh, but dude, apparently cops were swarming the apartments trying to figure or the the timeshare trying to figure out where the noise came from, and they never and they never knocked on the door. Wow. They couldn't figure it out. Yeah, we lucked out. Yeah, we got so lucky, dude. Do you think you party just as hard nowadays? Or absolutely not. No, no, that was the hardest I think I've ever gone. I think yeah. that kind of shaped my whole. It was kind of okay. We're not gonna do. We're not gonna fucking you know go down that path. Yep. We're not gonna be that guy. Yep. Yeah. But then it was funny because like years later, after everybody was all mad, like a couple of them have reached out to me and been like, "Dude, you were just trying to have fun." Like I see, <laughs> you know what I mean. In retrospect, I kind of see like we were trying to have fun. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> but stuff like that's so funny to me because there's some people back in Jersey where I'm like, "All right, it's Thanksgiving, let's have some drinks," and then they're just like, "Whoa, buddy, like slow it down." And yeah. then I'm here in Austin, and they're like, "Bro, you don't drink that much." <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so funny to see the difference in people's opinions. You know, like. Yeah. But I, I, that uh, does make me think about the crazy part. Maybe I shouldn't say this. I should keep the lore going about what? who I am. But no. nobody's ever seen me absolutely destroyed. Oh, dude, like, can I, you give me, since I gave you my, I was vulnerable with you. I gave you my my worst, that was my worst <sighs> moment of my life, that probably. That was definitely, yeah, one of I your worst I think that was my rock bottom. I can't top that. I'm not, I'm not no, no, a crazy party. You don't have to, but I'm just, what, do you have, like, a, a crazy drunk blackout story where, like, I did what? Like, yeah. for, even from your youth. Like, you know I, mean, I mean, I mean, one in Austin, we keep it relatable. It the one that happened last week. Yeah, no, I'm like, like <laughs> last week has been bad. I got this girl pregnant, and uh, so it's like, <laughs> but... Just cut that out for my girlfriend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she can't. She can't know. Um, the the one bad one for me that because like I also do have a history of uh, family with like drinking problems Same. and stuff like that. Yeah. So I do take my stuff very seriously about being responsible. Um, so I think that's there's something within me that knows how to like be like oh I hit my point and I slow down. I never get like crazy blacked out drunk you have the alcoholics instinct yeah i was like i feel it the alcoholic DNA. <laughs> we've reached maximum capacity yeah it's like uh the hulk where they're like how are you like how do you control it and he's like because i'm always angry i'm like Cause i'm because always drunk <laughs> <laughs> i literally was thinking the exact That's same so thing funny. Oh, yeah, dude. and I, it might be that You're the incredible like, drunk dude <laughs> yeah. they're like no matter what he page. does That's i can fly page. a plane i can do anything <laughs> Dude, you're just the next Burt Kreischer, dude. I know. I no, I'm just he's a big you inspiration. Gotta do, you guys got to do something together someday. When the page has a mill. I've thought about the page, that. When the page hits a milli, dude, hit up Birdie Boy. Like when they were at Nickel City promoting their vodka, yeah. I'm like, I need to be you a have, part of that. You should be able to have that. I'm going to, you know what? 
I, I I think we could make something work. I know I might know somebody. That'd be fun. Yeah, to get it just you, makes sense to get you in talks with Porosos. I don't know if you meet those guys, but at least yeah. at least get you uh, working with Porosos because um, one of my good friends is uh, Tom's photographer. He's been on the podcast. I would love yeah, that. Tom's personal trainer and photographer, and he's so he'll they he's been doing a lot of Porosos work. So yeah, because I know they go to like you know the liquor stores and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And my page will have more reach than a liquor store visit. Right. You know, so that's a that's a great point. Yeah. yeah. So, but I just do it just to meet them and yeah. hang out for a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but so real quick, so I was story? thinking about my story. Yeah. yeah. Um, so embarrassing. That's why I say it goes back to being responsible and how I don't like this. Right. Um, You're not. Pro we're not promoting any of this, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is like the rare occasion for me. But Cost one time I left chaos. Rainy Street. It's self deprecation, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm all about self deprecation. Yeah. Uh, my favorite co uh, comedian is Bobby Lee. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was leaving Rainy already drunk. We decided to go across the street to get one of the sangrias from Idle Hands, I believe it is, mm -hmm. or Eisenhower's. And their sangria is amazing. I mean, you can, some people can go and have one sangria and they're wasted. They're really. Good. And I was already like 10 plus, <sighs> and I, I've decided to finish with that. <laughs> I'm like, why did you know that'd be a perfect right cap, now? The perfect nightcap. <laughs> just a nice little <laughs> icing just on the cake. A really, just a malt liquor <laughs> frozen. <laughs> just destroy the sugar. Yeah. It blacked me out. And I remember I'm very like self conscious when it comes to like just, pe I don't want to look like an idiot. Yeah. Or be that guy. Oh, the ATX drinker took his shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like, you would think I want attention. I don't. Like, right. Um, so I remember like walking out and I was like stumbling and I'm just thinking in my head, like everybody's like, look at this stupid drunk, yeah. which probably nobody even saw me. No. You know, it was a um, bunch of other people that were just that drunk. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more in my head. <laughs> He's one of us. But just not as aware as I should have been. And I'm just stumbling out. And then we decide to hop on a scooter with my girlfriend on the back of me. Oh, no. Yeah, which is, like, even double stupid. And I've always been that person that's just, like, you know, don't drive and drink. Don't ride scooters when you're right. drunk. Like, call an Uber or something. Yeah. Well, we did it. And we almost got home, and I, like, partially blacked out. I went, like, off the curb onto the dirt path. It slid and fell. I Ooh. purposely landed, like, so that she was protected. Like, on my back, and I just went like this, and I smashed my face. Oh no! The <laughs> on the on the cement, dude. You're lucky you didn't knock those beautiful oh, I know. teeth out. <laughs> you need. We need those. I need them. But here's where the story is actually. You know, it has a good ending. So I had cuts like everywhere, just looking like a stupid drunk. I either got into a bar fight or something. The bank was still wearing masks. I was saved. I went into work wearing masks. They had no oh, this idea. This when you still worked at Fargo. This when I still worked at the bank. <laughs> <laughs> so oh I was able to go God. and hide it. They had no idea. That's it was so incredible. Funny, dude. So I was like, thank you for masks the one time that I thought. There was like, nothing from the eyes up, dude. <laughs> nothing from nothing. the eyes yeah, up. Yeah, because it was like here on my nose, here, here. It God, was you're amazing. you're so lucky you didn't knock a fucking one of those beautiful pearly whites <laughs> out, dude. You got the most beautiful teeth, brother. I'll take that. I think you're the look first that. person to say you, that. Let me get a full one. Let me get a... Oh! Look at that. I think you're the yeah. first person to say that. The concrete was coming for those that night, dude. I did get a free teeth whitening once. That's probably yeah, why. From maybe. the page. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Nice. It was like seven months ago. So That's, that's kind of one of those things you're like, what are you saying? I know. <laughs> you know I, I mean? They're like, hey, dude, like your content would be a lot better if you didn't have them yellow teeth. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. Dude. They actually just wanted to promote the like teeth whitening business. And I was yeah. like, oh, I've always wanted to try I that. I need one of those. Yeah. So I was like, oh, let's do it. And I was like, oh, can you do my girlfriend too? Are they not a dentist? Because I don't want to go to the dentist. No, they're I not a dentist. I haven't been to the dentist in a long time. Uh, and I, no. I just want somebody to whiten my shit up. We could, nope. deal, we could, deal, with the, we could deal with what's broken later. Yeah, you know yeah. I, mean? I know. I have that. Yeah. Same thinking, but it's one of those ones where they put like the lighting in your mouth. Oh, know, so. nice! Yeah, I'm gonna have to hit you up for that. Dude. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. Um, what's what are they called? Plug them, Austin. Oh man, I forgot. Now yeah. I feel it's guilty. Right. No, that's all right. But it's because it's, um, it's like it's like teeth whitening, lady. Yeah, teeth whitening lady. Uh, but she's super nice. Oh yeah, one thing I was gonna ask is I feel like so this is a big topic that we always kind of bring up with people musicians everybody that comes on that does something like creative and they're constantly pumping shit out like we are f kind of have this like boulder behind us right of like like that we're constantly running away from of like f we need to upload we need to upload right or i guess it's kind of a boulder we're like pushing up a mountain forever right that just keeps falling sliding back it's a, it's a sisyphean thing mm -hmm. but uh it's like how do you stay motivated, one, to, like, you know, because I'm sure there's times where, like, I'm fucking 
tired. I don't want to go out and record shit at the bar. You know what I mean? Like, and then there's probably times where you're like, I don't know what to do. I've already done the, I've already done, you've done a hundred, 200 bar. How many bars have you done? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, how do you, how do you keep track of, uh, that, I guess. And then how do you, how do you, uh, like stay motivated or, you know, what things do you do to like, even if it's like yoga or some shit, you know what I mean? To just like free your mind so you can go back in fresh. Cause I know that like, I've got a mountain of photo shit that like, it's sick. It yeah. looks awesome. And I, sh I just don't want to do it, <laughs> but I got to do it. I'm going to get it done. Yeah. I'm going to get it done. It's fine. If any clients listen, it's going to get done. But, but you know, some days I wake up and I'm like, I want to work at Wendy's. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just the consistent. Fucking, I'm fucking done. Yeah. And it's hard when you're, like, creating, especially doing it for other people or doing it for clients. It's like, how do you stay stoked? You know what I mean? Yeah, it is tough. There's a lot of times where, like, I just don't have other ideas. And, you know, quantity, I would say, is more important. But sometimes I do stress a lot about the quality, mm -hmm. um, especially when nowadays, like, quality to me is, means the chance of going viral because that's what grows your page. Right. And then that's what the brands see. It's the difference between 100K and a million views for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and then I go back to, for me, one of the things I'm most proud of is, like, I'm not a pretty model. I'm not a comedian. Yes, you are. You are pretty. I, thank you. And you're very pretty. Thank you. Um, but why I'm proud to say that is, is some people are successful only on social media for those reasons. Right. Um, I had to do it the other way, which was, like, grinding constantly you data know? <laughs> you had to do it with you had to do it with with numbers yeah figuring out what's like the smart way of doing social media um upload uploading consistently in a ton there mm -hmm. was weeks that i would say i've uploaded 10 times in a seven day time frame so that means some days with twice twice a day mm -hmm. um and that's how i wake up every morning being like i don't have these advantages other people have so if i'm going to win this game and make this a full-time job long term that i guess got to keep grinding and yeah. that's like what motivates me is like um, I got here because of hard work, so I'm going to lose it if I don't keep working hard. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Um, I sometimes also have to take a step back and just look at how cool it is, like, that we get to do what we do. Yeah. Whether it's drinking or – and doing, you know, uh, doing bar reviews and stuff like you do, or it's, like, taking pictures of some of the best restaurants in town. I'm like, dude, I have a – I'm in a spot that people would kill to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I have to remind myself of that. But that that is the reality of it, though. Yeah. That, like, people that work at Wells Fargo that listen to this, they don't maybe see that. It's like, it's fucking work is work sometimes. I hate to admit this. You know this, what I mean? But, like, it doesn't go away. It like doesn't. that. Yeah, like, I thought, I, I'm doing the thing that I've dreamed of forever. I still wake up grateful. There's those moments that we're like at the football game on the field and we right. go, I can't believe this. Or when you met, you met Post Malone. Oh, dude. I was like, who would have, five years ago, I was just a dude that nobody knew. And I was working at the bank that was like a typical suit wearing guy. Just mm -hmm. that's it. I was just, I bet you look good in the suit though. guy. I thought I looked pretty good. <laughs> 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 um, but you know, to, to be like, I got to meet Post Malone and not even like, oh, you met him at a thing where like you wait in line and then mm -hmm. you stand next to the poster you kicked and it like, with post. I kicked it with Post. You kicked it with Austin. Yeah. Did he and like we that, himself as Austin. You know, I tell people my 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 story about it is that yeah. Tell me the story. So it was uh, the premiere of Roadhouse. Yeah, and I thought I didn't know it was the premiere premiere until like I got there, and they're like, South no, by. this is the only one. Yeah, this was the main premiere. The, the, their red carpet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just got like an invite from an email. I couldn't believe. It. I was like, oh yeah, I'd love to go because one, I'm a huge movie fan. Um, I actually had a movie Instagram way back, actually. So oh, really? I, did, I did have another taste of social Shit. media. Oh, yeah. maybe it would. Maybe we can make a revival. You can do a revival at some point. I, I might be interested in that. When you, when you I've thought done, about like a when podcast you, or something. When you've done all the bars, uh, you I know, know what I mean. I thought you could do a revival. That. I could do that till I'm old, you know. Brother, so that's you could thing. you could do it whatever you want. So yeah, yeah. But so so how did you meet Post? So go to the the premiere. We're sitting there going to watch it, thinking maybe they'll come out and say hi. Nope. In comes Jake Gyllenhaal, Conor McGregor. They sit. That's I'm, crazy. I'm in the aisle. They sit right there, and I'm just like, I couldn't believe it. Who the fuck and is this I, guy? I like all of them. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm a fan of all of them. Like, oh yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal is in my top five favorite actors. Post Malone is my favorite artist, probably. Yeah. And then I'm a huge fan of Conor just because he's inspirational. He's the shit. He's the shit. Yeah. I'm bummed about the fight. <laughs> That's another conversation. But yeah, me too. But they Get just well they did announce. Get well soon, King. I think August 29th or something like that. Yeah. He's gonna fight. <sighs> Yeah, but 
so so Post so, is there. Sitting what is next Post to them. even doing there? Uh, he's in the first five minutes of the movie. Oh, he is. Okay, I haven't seen the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's a fun watch. It's yeah. very easy and silly I think, and yeah, fun. Yeah. yeah. So first off, I got to watch a premiere as somebody who's a movie fanatic. Next to Jake Gyllenhaal was like insane to me. And You're then like, my girlfriend's bro. sitting here and she's like this because Post Malone's sitting right there and she's just like this all the time. I'm like, stop. Yeah. You're just thinking about like big fish. You're like, <laughs> I love that movie so much. Yeah. I love your whole like, life. I love Donnie all Darko. Your just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that happens. I was like blown away. I got to meet Casey Nestat at that oh, as well. Nice. It was so cool. And then it finishes, and we were like, okay, should we just go get some drinks and cap off this amazing night? Mm -hmm. And I was like, they did invite me to like the after party, but in my head, it's South by Southwest. Right. So I'm thinking it's one of those like pop up Wait after in parties. A line, get yep. some swag bag, and mm -hmm. yeah. No, it was only for the people in that theater. So however many people that could be fit in there, eighty people, whatever, hundred people. And I go in. There is nobody else allowed in with passes. It's literally the premiere after party. And the actors, Jake Gyllenhaal, Post Malone, are literally just hanging out in the open, not with security guards. Post Malone had a cooler with Bud Lights in it. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking gangster. Which was crazy because there was like an official bar making cocktails, and he's like, no, nah, I don't want that. I still want the Bud Light. Um, so I end up coming over to him. And uh, we have a great conversation. I tell him how big of a fan, but I'm like, I know everybody says this to you, like, yeah. whatever, boring, and then that's it. But my, like, big moment was when we finished, we dapped up, and it was so smooth <clears throat> that nice. I was like, we're best friends. Yes. And I just walked away, and I was like, I'm going home now. Like, I don't want to do nothing else. I no, just felt no, so complete. No, no, yeah, we're not going to push push this night anymore, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We pushed it to the bursting point. To, yeah, to the— You're basically playing blackjack with the evening at that <laughs> yeah. point, right? And yep. you hit a 20, and yeah. you're like, we're not going any further, dude. Yep. Hold, and, hold. And that's where I messed up, too, because after I saw Connor— and he was actually like talking to some people with the, like a security guard next to him. So he was out in the open before, but I was trying to play it cool. Yeah. But then I went over finally, and then that's when he like stepped away. And I was Ugh. like, shit, I shouldn't have waited. Yeah. And they were just like, I think they were watching the fight from the night or something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Connor. And he turns and he like looked past me. He's yeah. heard me, but he looked past me. And then I looked back at it and I'm like, I should have told him. He was promoting his um, Irish whiskey. Oh, yeah. He would have absolutely done something with me if I told the security guard or whatever. And the reason why I say that is the next day he did a pop up at Little Woodrow's mm. where they were just like pouring it for everybody and yeah, they did a Robert real twelve or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, same. That was another he example should. of like he should, bro. Yeah. Oh, I know, dude. You should hit but, him with you should hit him with that like hail mary DM. I uh, know. And just go, like, yo, please. dude. I was at the Roadhouse thing. Uh, just letting you. I'm in Austin. Just letting you know if you want to get proper twelve around Austin, hit me up. Uh, you know, and you never know. You, you never, just know. never know. Yeah, until exactly. You ask for shit sometimes, you know. And what's it gonna hurt? It's not like you know you're not yeah. gonna ruin your relationship with McGregor. <laughs> yep, that's true. <laughs> but that would be wild. Let's I know, go. and that's Come what on, it was. Dude. I think I just met Post, so I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't care. I'm just gonna walk out. Yeah, let's not be greedy. Yeah, let's not be greedy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My so buddy uh, Ridley, who uh, you know, I do the podcast with Michael Ridley too. No, uh, I didn't know that. Uh, the comedian. Uh, Great yeah, comedian. but I didn't know that. Oh, I post all. The, I, I thought know. this was like your own thing. So, so. this is my podcast. Okay, we sh we're actually doing his right after this. So um, he, uh, if you like Bobby Lee, you'll like him. He's 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 goofy Asian too. No, but uh, but he's uh, he met Post Malone backstage. He was hanging out at the Kill Tony Arena in L.A. Oh, cool. Yeah, and uh, he was making Post Malone laugh and like. Five and, and he felt he so. made he made Post Malone turn to Red Band and go, "Hey, he's gonna be there tomorrow, right?" Uh, and I was like, "Yo, <laughs> I was on my anniversary trip with my girlfriend oh. who who I was I was about to I was about to propose to her like in that weekend. Wow! And every thirty minutes, I was like, "Hey, babe, isn't it crazy that Michael really made Post Malone laugh <laughs> and then made Post Malone ask Brian Red Band if Post if oh. Ridley was gonna be there?" So it's like he's like. They're on first name basis. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> and I will say, I mean, not that anybody's going to care about this, but Post Malone is legit when it comes to being a real dude. He's just the coolest dude, it sounds like. Yeah. Like he had, he was in the movie for five minutes. Yeah. He didn't have to be talking to every person that was there and yeah. just like be normal. He could have just said hi real quick, took a picture, and just kept chilling at that party. Yeah. And he was like, no, taking the time <laughs> to actually have a conversation with each individual person. What a gangster. Ah, uh, the best. What a gangster. So yeah, this has this has allowed you to do some cool shit, dude. Yeah, man, it's it's been wild. I, now this is my full time job, and some people can say I get to drink for a living, and I'll take that. So. Yeah, fuck yeah. Where are we at with time, too? Uh, we're at uh one thirteen. 
113. Let's wrap this up, dude. Let's, Sounds put good, it, man. let's do that thing that you did with Post Malone after that dap. Dap it up. Let's just yeah, well, let's just let's let's <laughs> let's leave on a high note. I love that. You know what I mean? That works with me. And you can come back anytime. Yeah, man. I, we'll I definitely do this at some back. point. This was so much fun, dude. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, man. Yeah, thanks for coming. Do you anything you. you want to plug really quick? Not really. Um, but you know, ATX Drinker on Instagram and TikTok. And then I'm starting another podcast with a friend as well called the Austin Pod. That'll probably be out maybe Ooh. when this comes out. Yeah. Ooh, if you ever need a guest, hit me up, dude. Yeah. I'd love to. We already talked about maybe doing guests in the future. I'd love to riff. Yeah, heck yeah. yeah for sure. Well, thank you for coming on, Anthony. Thanks I appreciate it. Me. You guys, please like, subscribe, drop something in the comments. Even if it's just drop a whiskey glass in the comments, dude, for, uh, for our boy Anthony here. Follow Anthony on Instagram, ATX Drinker, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot.